Good evening, my friends, and welcome back to the next episode of Siberia 2. Last time out, we got ourselves a juicy, juicy Hans Shroud, and that's going to be used by the monks in the monastery to diagnose him, if we can blag our way up there. They're not letting us in when we dial the bell, though. Now, we did meet an interesting monk over here doing laundry reasonably obsessed with a bird. Now, we've exhausted all of the dialogue options with this chap here. Sister? Brother? Uh, brother? Yes, my sister. Um, but the best I can think is that we either need to get the bird somehow involved <laughs> in this disagreement, or, or we need to find ourselves uh, some way of tricking them into thinking that Kate Walker's a man, which would probably be the easier thing to do, to be honest. Um, or just ask one of the men in this village. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to re-explore the dialogue options, because now that we've found out about the bird for the first time... Uh, I don't think that I will be very well received. Now that we've found out about the bird for the very first time, dialogue options about the bird might have unlocked with the half dozen or so people in this town that we can talk to about things. So, let's talk to Malka first. Tell me, how is it going? Nope, Malka's got nothing new. Incidentally, I don't know what our next step's going to be if if we don't have any Mr. Sirkos? options about this. Bird. What can I do for you, Miss? Oh shoot! Okay. Well, so far, so far, no good. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, so it's the guy in the shop and Oscar. And if those guys don't have anything about this bird, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Oscar's a veritable repository of information, though. Wondering if that was the sound of a bird there. Colonel? Colonel? Ah, Miss Walker. Colonel, you don't have one of those whistles for making bird noises among your many treasures here, do you? A bird call? Why, I sell them by the truckload during the hunting season. I've got a whole collection of them. I think I've got just what you need. We haven't told you which Somewhere. bird yet. Somewhere. Aha! Gold bird call. Silver bird call. Thanks for all your help, Colonel. Black bird call. The pleasure call. is all mine, Miss Walker. Oh, wow. He's given us a whole, a whole bunch of them. Wait, how do we use them? I really don't like that spider that crawls over the over the barrel there. Um Well, I guess we'll go back to the monk and see if the monk wants any of these bird calls. It's a bit tricky, yeah, because there isn't really a way for Kate to use an item just in isolation of everything else. You know what I mean? Um... Items always have to be used on something.
Mm. Big news. On the Twitch side of things, we have hit 250 followers today. So that's a that's an amazing milestone. We are at the quarter millennium on Twitch, which is excellent. Okay. Now if I speak to you, do you have anything now to uh, say? Brother? Yes, my sister. No. Can I use the bird calls on you? I can. That's and do you plan on returning it? Ever? Okay, no. Ooh. Oh, silver. That's not Can you hear? Can oh. you hear? The Merula Alba. Oh. It is oh, calling that was the to one. me. Calling to me. Here we go, Cape Walker, now with changeable outfits. We've got a monk's habit. Oh, she's going to get changed behind the rock this time. So, uh, no need to head back to the train, just for a changing room. To the monastery. Here we go. Surprise! I was a lady all along. <laughs> um, good evening, sir. Vow of silence, you see. Well, we'll take the matches. Hmm. I need something else to activate it. I need something else to activate it. Interesting. So this makes something. You're pouring that into a mold. I need something else to activate it. Seems to me like you need to put something in there, like metal. I need something else to activate it. Right, so it's not coins that we're putting in. And it's not the key and it's not the box of matches. It must be something else that we're going to get later. Let's not worry about it too hard for now. I mean, if I was feeling really spicy, but no, let's not just start a fire randomly in the monastery. No running whilst you're in a monk's habit either. We've got a couple monks here that are expecting something. But not the shroud. 
Oh, well, we can uh, speak to them. No, not much to say. Okay, let's go this way and then we'll go down for this building later. Nothing I can do. It's locked. Well, we do have a small key. Nah, not the correct kind of key. Well, you never know, right? <laughs> Like, always worth giving it a go. So, funny story. When I was in university, I was on a corridor of 11 people. And in our first couple weeks there... Now, you know, when you first go to university, you're on a corridor. There's, like, there's 11 rooms. You're kind of getting to know everyone. You're kind of getting to know whose room's whose. And then after about three or four days, we figured out that one of the rooms was actually empty, right? Um, now, we'd already also figured out that there were only around about five or so keys for the whole building, it seemed, because, like, we could quite reliably use someone's key to open almost any door, because just... I, I don't know. I, I have no idea why. I guess the locks were just mass-produced garbage or whatever. But yeah, I think I think of our corridor of 11, we worked out we only had about five keys between us. And so everyone's key could open, like, pretty much one or two other people's rooms. Um, except this one room that was empty. So there we go. Because originally we were planning on using it as like a, as like a little corridor living room. Then it turned out that actually someone did someone did arrive and, and occupy that room Hello? a couple of weeks later. Anybody there? <laughs> so it wasn't actually available anyway. Spooky. Ah. Uh, excuse and you me. You look like a patriarch. If I ever saw a one. woman. Women are expressly prohibited. What the devil are you doing here, woman? My well, name is Kate Walker. The devil's name inside I'm a these lawyer walls. from New York. Excuse me, but I absolutely must speak to you, and your monks wouldn't let me in. Miss Walker, your female presence in this dwelling of monastic retreat is unwelcome. It is very troubling. Please leave quickly. I have a friend who is really sick. In the village, I was told that we must say his name is Hans Volberg. The Lord sends us, my child. Everyone seems to know who Hans Vorlberg is. Don't say my friend is sick. Say Hans Vorlberg, the very famous person who probably saved your life thirty years ago, because everyone seems to know who he is. I have come to ask the assistance of the priest healer in the monastery. My friend is very unwell, and very old. Sometimes a body weary of life refuses treatment. That is why we here tend to the soul. From what element is your friend suffering? A high fever. It started with a kind of fit. He felt... Sometimes we have to just accept the inevitable, my child, and resign ourselves to the call of time. Please forgive my slightly cavalier methods to get to see you, Father, but my cause is just, I assure you. I have no need of assurance, my girl. Remember, you are here beneath the gaze of the Almighty. My friend is named Hans Vorlberg. Mm -hmm. He has devoted his life to making fantastic mechanical machines. As his automaton soothed ones. the harsh daily labor of the people of his day and amused them, entertained them, He's a genius inventor, you know. Hmm. An inventor, you say? The inspiration of such people is often cowed to humility before the marvels of God's own creation. I was half expecting him to say, Hans Vorlberg, 
Well, why didn't you say so? You we don't go understand. way back. <laughs> Maybe Hans is old and frail, but he has but one desire. To continue his journey. We have to learn how to meet our fate, my child. This is God's will. My friend needs treatment. You are the only one for miles around who can give him the care he needs. I need a sign from the Almighty, or else I can do nothing for your friend. Even I am sorry, Miss Walker. I really need your help, Father. You're our only hope. My girl, I attend only to extreme cases, grave illness, and madness. But this is an extreme case, Father. There is a rule, Miss Walker. You must respect it. Bring me the imprint of your friend's suffering. I know what you were telling me. I brought the shroud. Show me, my child. Well, I think we had to get the shroud before coming up here, right? Right. We will go search for your friend. Nice. It's our man. He's got something. Canton? I can barely hear you. Mr. What news have you got? I, I talked to the hotel guys, Mr. Martin. She checked out a viral bat last week. Headed off with Hans Vorlberg. How is she? Seems her health is fine, Mr. Martin, but... Uh, what? Her behavior seems... Don't beat about the bush, Canton, please. Look, Mr. Martin, it's like this. I'm afraid that Miss Walker has been acting... Uh, how do you say it? Did you sleep well, my child? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> How is Hans? Alas, you brought him to us so late, my child. I fear we cannot do much. We are going to concentrate on tending to his soul. Ooh, that doesn't sound what? good. What did you say? The man is worn and old. <laughs> his final hour is upon him. But that's impossible. Your friend is dying. You must believe me, my child. Please take care of Hans, father, please. Torment yourself no longer, my girl. I will tend to the poor soul. Can I see him? No. I do not advise it. Deranged minds are often too addled by evil. And you could become contaminated by its sly malevolence. Sounds dangerous. Look, contagion doesn't bother me. I've got to talk with him, you understand? The rules, Miss Walker. Remember the rules. No one talks to the sick. I just can't abandon Hans like that. I must see him immediately, you hear? Okay. So be it. Your friend is in the last chamber at the end of the corridor. I beseech thee, my girl, pay no heed to the imprecations of a sick, delirious, dying man. I will wait for you in the chapel when everything is over. For the word. formalities, you understand. Okay, Hans. If there's any secret codes or clues that you need to let us know about this mission, now's the time, probably. Hans? Hans, can you hear me? Kate, where are we? Don't you worry. You're in very good hands. We cannot carry on our journey in these conditions, Hans. You are ill. You have to be cared for. I... I must go, Kate Walker. I said I'd keep you company until we reach Siberia. I brought you here to be treated. 
We don't have the time, Kate. We've got... We've got to go to Siberia, Kate. <laughs> Calm down, Hans, please. No! No! <laughs> so, someone in the comments section could probably, like, fill me in on this one, right? Because one thing I'm sort of missing is... How has Hans not got to Siberia yet? Because... It's been pretty reasonably well established that he went to Arlbad. It like he got as far as Arlbad years ago, and he's been here years ago because he's made these mechanical horses and stuff. And then he's what sort of been wandering around a bit because like he's old now, but he originally left to go and find Siberia years and years and years ago. So, I don't understand why, if he knows where it is, why he hasn't already been. Or maybe he doesn't know where it is, and there, and he's just still wandering around trying to find it. That's the bit that I'm kind of missing. Hans, we're at the monastery. Do you remember? In Valadilen, it is 7.15 p.m. Father is always punctual. He never stays at home. He always goes to the factory. He locks himself in his office and... No, Hans. Valadilen is where you were born. Here, we're in Romansburg. Valadilen is miles away. We're going to take care of you. Alexei. Find Alexei Tukianov. Alexei Tukianov? Alexei. He has lived with the Yukals. He can cure me. Oh, okay. Who is Alexei? An old monk. A friend. He knows about Yukol medicine. It seems you rate the Yukols for their medicine. Yukol shaman medicine is very strong. Hans, all that shaman malarkey is nonsense. You know that. Oh, strong, The Yukols know a lot of things, Kate Walker. A lot of things. Why do you want me to find this monk, Alexei? To cure him. Alexei, already established that. He can treat me. Hans, do try to be reasonable. Nobody here can treat you better than the old patriarch. Alexei knows you call medicine. The old patriarch is an ass. <laughs> So you really think this monk can cure you? Alexei can cure like the shaman. Shaman are the right doctors for me. <coughs> I'll be back soon. Okay, Kate. Okay, let's go find Brother Alexei. Hopefully he's in the monastery. You like to eavesdrop. Eavesdrop? No. I clean and clean. That's hmm. all. I've just spoken to Hans. Ha, ha, ha. And what news do you bring, my sister? Um, he spoke to me of one of your brothers, named Alexei. Ah, Tempus Edax Rerum. <laughs> Brother Alexei is not of this world, my sister. So you don't know this Alexei, do you? Well, he just said oh, he's no. <laughs> Omnis homo mendax. <laughs> Come on, you must know where Alexei is. <laughs> Moore's ultima ratio. <laughs> yeah, my Latin's a little bit too rusty. Um, <laughs> Here we go, right. Sister, Alexei was a man of God and my friend. He lived away from the monastery for many years among the strange Yukol people, and their something of the great mammoths were divine to them. It looks like I can't move this giant thing. Monk far from it, to God long enough. He takes many different forms in the imaginations of man. Oh, you can just about read through it. 
that were divine to them. Uh, something about praying to God long enough. Understand that he takes many different forms in the imagination of man. This might help you. The key, the light of the mammoths, something. Mm. We got a bucket. Oh no, it's a brush. Now, the original Siberia had very few people milling about. But you could talk to pretty much all of them. Siberia 2 seems to have more people milling about but more of them can't be spoken to. Right, okay, okay, that's this path here. Fine. Hmm, should we try the garden first and then this building? So it looks like we've got two paths here. Aha. Uh -huh. Little bit early, maybe, to be Whiling away friend. those celibate hours. I fear the worst. I mean <laughs> this casket gives me the creeps. I'm not a hundred percent sure what being celibate has to do with grave digging, to be honest, but Yeah. Hmm. It's kinda steep. But with the sled, I could slide down the slope. Ah, this is going to be how we make our escape later. This casket gives me the creeps. Well, you get in the casket and... <laughs> it's, it's, it's you and Hans. You and Hans bundle into the casket. Pretty sure that's a coffin rather than a casket anyway, right? So caskets, for anyone who doesn't know, are straight, right? So caskets are rectangular, generally, and they have a domed top. Whereas a coffin is wider at the shoulders than the legs and tend to be flat on top. That is my understanding, at least, anyway. Might be totally wrong. Okay, so we've got path here, path here. Oh, 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 we're at the top, we're at the top. We're on the second floor. We're not on the ground floor. Okay, so we could go down and we can go up. So we've got something here. Oh, wow, it's a massive halberd. Ooh, puzzle time. Uh huh. I don't think it's going to be anything as trite as light all of them. This is clearly some kind of code. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we've got 12 of them then. Uh, in a clock formation. Uh, right, okay, and we can put the halberd back like that. Doesn't look like there's anything else down here. So, okay, that's a puzzle. It's 
So we've got the uh, the device over by the lift, and then we have. Huh. There's nothing up here. Well, that makes me think that if there's nothing up here, that makes me strongly suspect that this is something to do with the puzzle. Indeed. So I'm looking, we've got these fonts, which kind of line up. So we've got a series of candles, these diamond shaped patterns occur on all of these. And you've got these fonts every so often. Why would there be a ramp up to the top except to see something on these candles? It's got to be some kind of code, right? It's not going to be light all the candles. It's got to be something to do with the fact that, okay, so like, what do we got here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight pillars, 12 candles. So actually, these arches don't line up with the candles, critically. I mean, we can light them all and see if anything happens, like see if uh, lighting up the room reveals anything, reveals any clues or anything like that. I'm just not 100% sure what the scroll gives us. We certainly can, of course, go back to the chapel and see uh, what we have in there. The patriarch might well have some more um, dialogue lines for us. Okay, just a couple more. This is just to rule out anything like, you know, the light from the candles illuminates something that can only be shown by moonlight and starlight or, you know, something, uh, something along those lines. Ah, they turn off once you put the halberd back. So whatever happens here, it cannot actually just affect the natural state of the room. It has to be a code that you input and then it's done. Hmm. Okay, come back here later. No 
Now these guys didn't really have anything to say. I think we go back to the chapel. There is a machine over there, but I think we need to put something like metal in there, probably. Oh, do you know what? Do you reckon it's a key maker? Do you reckon it's a little key forge? It's a little cylinder that comes out of it, isn't it? Hello, father. Hello, my child. You really can't do anything for Hans? His destiny is not in mortal hands. We must pray, dear girl, pray for his redemption. But Hans has no reason to repent. His fever-driven outpourings are not those of a holy man. Oh, far from it. I mean, you know, what about what about all of his Hans worldly Hans Varlberg is Kate? not a sinner. The pagan fantasies with which he sullies the air in his delirium are those of a heretic. Pray, female, pray to save your friend from the sizzling fires of hell. You, you're a total crackpot. You're a fanatic. I will talk to Hans, you hear? I talk to Hans. Yes. He seems better. It is but an illusion, my girl. His mortality is teetering on the brink. I know about hmm. these things. He told me about a monk who could help him. And what monk might that be, Miss Walker? A monk who has spent long years with the Yukols, that mysterious tribe from the far north. Uh, your friend is clearly very sick, my poor child. Father, do you know a man named Alexei Tukianov? He was a heretic and charlatan. He is not worth the breath, my girl. It seems Hans Varlberg considers him highly. Your friend must have lost his marbles. But could I just m meet the man anyway? No. Alexei Tukianov has left us right. a long time ago, Miss Walker. We're going on an adventure. Excuse where is he? Excuse my insistence, Father, but where might I be able to find Alexei Tukianov? It's very important. Alexei Tukianov is dead, my girl. F. May his soul rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace! We absolutely must continue our journey. We must. Don't even think about it, child. Mr. Vorlberg is in no fit state. Hans Varlberg is going to see his dream come true. You hear me? Wretched girl. His dreams are almost at an end and there is nothing you can do. Hans often told me about the mysterious people of the far north, the Yukels. They are degenerate heathen savages that worship idols and false gods and resist the redemption of the Lord. Hans lived among them for a long time. They're like a second family to him. Please, dear girl, do not let yourself succumb to the quaint temptations of those pagans. Their only ambition is to wallow in their so-called primitive paradise, and all its lechery and bestiality. Remember that those who live far from God doom themselves to eternal chastisement. Okay, I think I've heard all I need. I'm off. Go, mm. my child. But weigh the consequences of your actions well. <sighs> Uh, Hello, I don't think there's anything else Hello, to speak to him about, my child. Right? Oh, no, there I is. I don't think Hans is delusional when he tells me that this mysterious monk can help him. He's very lucid. Well, Please, dear it's girl, kind of been established that this mysterious no monk to the not around a dying sinner. It is clear the man is inventing nonsense tales in the vain hope of remission. I don't care who the Yukels are or what they worship. But I believe I can help Hans to reach his dream. That's all that counts for me. I pray to the Lord that that hell-fed tribe have been wiped out. In our land, alcohol and the pox are the tools the Almighty wields to purge himself of his anger and rid us of the depraved. Okay, I think I've heard all I need. I'm off. Go, my child. But weigh mm. the consequences of your actions well. <sighs> Okay. 
Well, we don't really have anything that resembles a lead on where um, where Alexi could be, right? Like, everyone says that he's dead. Everyone said that Hans Vorarlberg was dead, though, as well, to be fair. Um, should we talk to Hans again? He might have an opinion on whether Alexi is deceased or not. Hans? Mm -hmm. No. Oh. Wait. We can view these separately. All right, fine. <laughs> so, among the strange Yukor people and their stories of the great mammoths of old that were divine to them, I am no wise monk, far from it, but I have prayed to God long enough to understand that he takes different forms in the imagination of men. This might help you. The key is in the light of the mammoth's eye. The light of the mammoth's eye. Stained glass mammoth. Well, we can't give that to him. And the scroll's no good either. The key is in the light of the mammoth's eye. I mean, we can have the mammoth up in our inventory and just see if anything happens. Oh! We've got some shears. What would the shears be useful for? Hmm. My name is Kate Walker, and you are? Okay, I'm going. I can't abandon Hans. Oh, oh, okay. We can't leave the monastery. Fine. I wonder, can we melt the shears down? What is that thing, do you reckon? So the coins are not used for any of it. Neither is the brush. Nope, for the shears. Yeah, the box of matches is a no as well. And the small key. Because I thought maybe we can melt the small key down. I need something else to activate it. She needs something else to activate it. I need something else to activate it. It looks like something sc that scrapes across the table as well. Hang on, wait. <laughs> Wait, so I opened that up and then used this, and now it's okay? So we've got a candle. Oh, oh we're putting little wicks in here. I need something else to activate it. 
I need something else to activate it. No point doing that. No point doing that. We've already got our candle, but we can make more candles. Fine. What's a candle going to give us, though? Well, we can certainly combine the candle with the box of matches. Hmm. But yeah, not obvious what we're doing there. I'm assuming it's not going to be something like pour candle wax in the lock to make an impression of the key that you need. <sighs> this casket gives me the creeps. I hope they're not thinking of putting Hans in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that casket's going to be for sliding us down the side of the hill. Nothing out here seems to be able to be activated, though. Hmm, okay, well this one seems to be a bit of a genuine mystery. So we've got one puzzle which to do which is to do with activating these candles here. Um, and we have a bunch of items that we're not really sure how to use them. But yeah, we're going to have to give a big old think on these topics. Unfortunately, though, my friends, we are out of time for today's episode. This has been episode three of Siberia 2. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Consider joining the channel and you get these episodes slightly sooner. I will see you very soon. Have a great rest of your week. Bye for now.